My name is Joe Horn. I'm Community Development Director for Williamson County Government. And thank you for uh, viewing Community Development 101. This is a series of shows put together in conjunction with Mayor Anderson's office to discuss different aspects of the Community Development Department, which regulates uh, development of properties in the unincorporated county, uh, in unincorporated Williamson County. Uh, my guest today is one of the uh, departments that is part of community development, that being the Department of Sewage Disposal Management. Uh, that would be septic tanks, wouldn't it, Brian? <laughs> that would be septic systems, that's correct. So tell me a little bit about yourself for the, for the folks out here. I think I know a lot about you. <laughs> yes, um, well, I've been with the department for a little over 22 years now. Um, started off just uh, reviewing plans, have a background in engineering, um, and then for the last, I don't know, 10 12, 10, 12 years, I've been the director of the department, um, kind of overseeing the department and the day-to-day -day operations of the department. I see. I see. Williamson County is kind of unusual in how we, we regulate uh, uh, subsurface septic systems. Exactly. Like, yeah, one of the different ways we say There, there are many terms for septic systems, right. uh, subsurface, sewage disposal systems, on-site wastewater systems. It's all just a different term for a septic system. Understood. But, but but you're right, uh, Williamson County is a little bit unique in the state of Tennessee, um, whereas we um, are what's called a contract county. So in the terms of, if you think about the state of Tennessee, um, there's a state agency that regulates uh, septic systems for the entire state. Um, and uh, we, as a contract county, we actually have a contract with the state, and our department regulates septic systems just within uh, the jurisdictional boundaries of Williamson County. Um, so we have our own set of rules and regulations, a little bit separate from the state. So that makes us a little bit unique. Um, we're one of about 11 counties across the state that, that, are, that operate that way. I see. Well, you're, you're a bit of a unicorn anyway. You know, I've, I've went to all this uh, explanation that we handle development services for an unincorporated county, but your department extends a little beyond that. It, it does very much because of that uniqueness of um, covering all of Williamson County, our jurisdiction with septic systems is not just in the unincorporated. It's also the incorporated uh, parts of the county, so within the city limits. So Franklin, Brentwood, uh, Fairview, Knowlesville, uh, other, other Thompson, Station. Thompson Station, exactly. So if there are septic systems within those jurisdictions, um, those cities don't have regulatory authority over those. The county does. And that's how the state regulations are set up. They give that jurisdiction to us. So we have to work with those municipalities as well. Well, you know, uh, probably we won't go too deeply into it. Uh, we didn't become a contract county to what, 1993? Until 93, that's right. Okay. So prior to that, we were um, just a state agency. Mm -hmm. um, but back in, in the late 80s, early 90s, um, there was a lot of issues with septic systems in the county. There was a lot of systems that, uh, new systems that weren't working properly, had a lot of failure rates. And, and so that's when the county looked at doing their own program. And, um, and that's when we became a contract county. We were one of the, the first ones in the state to do that. Um, and it was so that we could do things a little bit different to try to, to, to get a handle on the issue that okay. was going on at the time. Okay, I see. Well, you have a pretty good size little department you work through as well. You have a number of soil scientists, you have uh, inspectors, yep. uh, reviewers, and support staff. So yeah, we you're, are, you're a robust set of uh, folks to uh, keep track of. We do. It's um, it, it, it's kind of, and we'll talk, I guess, a little bit more about our process, but it's a, a kind of a cradle-to-grave mentality. So mm -hmm. in, um, in doing septic systems, it takes a lot of different people and different expertise to do different aspects of it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we have, we have soil scientists on staff. Uh, we have engineers on staff, um, inspectors. Um, and um, people, that, uh, other technical people that do reviews of different uh, plans that are submitted, and like you said, our support staff. So I think fully staffed, we've got about 20 people in our office, which is a pretty large office for dealing with septic systems. Understood. But, you know, it's probably jumped over probably the major reason. There, there, there is a reason why the department exists. And uh, just, you know, why, do, well, why does the state of Tennessee, and more importantly in this instance, why does Williamson County uh, regulate septic systems? And that's, a, that's an excellent point because people don't really think about that aspect of it. Um, and you go back historically, you know, 50, 100 years ago, um, regulating sewage disposal in general was a big issue because of health concerns. And that's where a lot of it was really born out of is, is protection of public health. Mm -hmm. um, back 100 years ago, sanitation practices aren't what they are today. Um, and so that's kind of how septic system regulations were born um, for the protection of public health. 
I mean, it's also now we, we look at it also as protection of the environment. So we look at, you know, one of our big charges is groundwater pollution or surface water pollution um, so that you make sure that you have safe, clean waters in the state of Tennessee. So it's really twofold, the protection of public health, protection of the environment. Um, and it's also to ed educate people, educate mm -hmm. homeowners um, about the systems that they have and how to maintain their systems and, and how to have uh, uh, good safe systems and good safe sanitary practices. Okay. Well, as we said earlier, we talked a little bit about the jurisdiction. You know, primarily uh, septic systems are part of the unincorporated county, but they do, uh, do they they do we do have uh, instances where you are actually working within the municipalities. You, you have a few. It's becoming a little bit more rare, but mm -hmm. years ago there was a lot more. Um, but um, if you look at Williamson County in general, um, sewer service isn't everywhere, True. and so that's really where where our focus is, is, is where sewer is not available. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, most of the city of Franklin, for instance, has sewer service, but there's pockets within the city of Franklin that doesn't have sewer service. Mm -hmm. Same way with Brentwood and these other municipalities. And that's where, where our role is, that's is true. where sewer is not available, then you have to have a septic system because uh, you have to have some means of sewage disposal. I see. Well, you know, uh, you know, Probably an interesting part of this too is it's still what roughly twenty five percent of uh, houses in the United States are are served by yeah. one form or another of a septic system. It, that's that's very true. So when you look at it on a national scale, there's a, a large segment of the population um, that are served by septic systems, and, and a lot of people don't realize that. And then when you look at, at our our situation in our county, that percentage is really higher mm -hmm. um, because of the unincorporated county. There's there's no sewer service. So, you know, quite a bit of the, of the county is served by septic systems, and it can be upwards of 50 percent or more. I see. Um, so, yeah, it's, a, it's a, an issue that um, it's a very important issue and, and things that people don't sometimes realize. You know, we probably don't realize, too, because, you know, the, uh, the uh, you know, not only is Williamson County one of the fastest growing counties, perhaps nationwide, but also have to deal with the fact that uh, our populations are, can be rather affluent. That's right. And affluence uh, equals uh, big houses. It, it's exactly right. And, and I nearly so, said effluence, but I didn't. So, <laughs> and, and that is a unique thing. I mean, we are a very, very fast growing county. Of course, you know that as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the, the fastest growing in the state. Um and one of the fastest growing in the nation as well. And, and the affluency of the county does, like you say, um, equal some bigger houses that we have to uh, deal with. I um, mean, that presents a unique challenge as well. Um, whereas some of the more rural parts of Tennessee don't have the size of houses that we have. Um, and so our systems have to accommodate the size of houses that we're building. So that makes can make things challenging at times. I see, and we'll probably talk about this in another place in another time though too, but you, you also have a, a charge with doing the non-residential systems as well because we, right. have a, we have quite a few uh, churches, even in some cases, although it hasn't happened in quite some time, schools. Well, that's right, so, so you're right. So not only do we regulate and oversee septic systems for residential structures, but for commercial structures. So any kind of commercial structure that's gonna that, that doesn't have access to sewer, they have to be served by a septic system. So the prime example that you mentioned is churches. We have quite a few churches in the unincorporated part of the county that have to rely on a septic system. So then we're trying to come up with a, a system for them as well. Um, you know, but any, any kind of um, commercial facility, whether it's a business, an office, a retail shop, um, or anything along those lines that, that doesn't have access to sewer, then, then we have to help them try to figure out how to to get a septic system to serve their needs. I see, I see. Well, you know, we've talked a lot about what about septic systems. Why don't we talk a little bit about what a septic system is? Yeah. I know. I think, uh, I think if you buy a house on septic, uh, you, uh, frankly, your system is largely uh, invisible, except maybe a, maybe a, maybe a, a manhole lid and maybe a pump. And, but, and, and a lot of times, it's, it's exactly that. It's out of sight and out of mind. And, and so a lot of people don't, don't think about it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I kind of tell people, um, one of an, an analogy is, think about you're, you're operating a wastewater treatment plant that may be in your yard. Mm -hmm. The other misconception that, that the general public has about septic systems is they think it's just a tank. Mm -hmm. um, and there's more to it than that. So when you, when you think about a septic system and all the different components, um, you can kind of break it down into two main components. You do have tanks that are installed down in the ground. And so your wastewater all flows in and is collected into those tanks. Um, and then there's some treatment that happens in there, and we can talk about that in a second. Then the other component 
is the field lines. So um, there's treatment that happens in the tanks, and then that treated effluent then has to be dispersed into the soil. And so field lines are buried into the ground, um, and those field lines distribute that wastewater into the soil. And that's what we're trying to do is reintroduce that water into the soil, and the soil ultimately treats a lot of that wastewater before it gets to the groundwater. And so if you think about it, it's really one of the ultimate green concepts. That's a, a key term that people mm -hmm. like to use these days. They want to be more green. Well, a septic system is doing that. It's taking a wastewater product, and it's putting it back into the environment and cleaning it up. Um, and, and recharging the groundwater right there, you know, where it's being used. I see. Well, with, without, uh, I guess, uh, without getting without uh, getting too graphic in descriptions or anything, I guess we should talk about the, these components. First sure. of all, the septic tank itself. Yeah. So, so yeah, the, the, the tank itself, typically in Williamson County, the vast majority of all of our tanks are concrete tanks. Um, some places may have fiberglass tanks or plastic tanks. We very rarely see those here in, in Williamson County. They're all concrete tanks. Typically, they can be anywhere from 1,000 gallons to 1,500 gallons and maybe up to 2,000 gallons for a residence. Those commercial jobs mm -hmm. we were talking about can be much bigger. Right. They can get up to 10,000 gallons, depending on how big the structure is. But those tanks are, are designed, like I said, to receive all that wastewater. And there's actually treatment processes that happen in that tank that clean the wastewater. It's an anaerobic type of environment, so there's no oxygen there, and you have microbiological activity that breaks down the waste, mm -hmm. um, and it actually treats that wastewater. And so the, the tank is, people think it's, it's you know, pretty basic, but it serves very uh, different functions, and it's, uh, it, the process can be pretty complex. But in essence, you'll end up having that, that uh, biological activity break down the waste, and you end up with more a clearer effluent, which we mm -hmm. call the treated effluent, um, and that effluent leaves that tank. Um, and so sometimes some systems have a septic tank, and they might have another tank. They may have a pump tank. Mm -hmm. Depending on the type of system that we'll probably talk okay. about here in a minute, um, there's different types of systems. Some systems have to be pumped to, to the field lines. So you could have a two-tank system, um, and it would be a separate tank as well, and it's typically a concrete tank, and it will house, house a pump, and that just is a, a way of delivering that effluent out to the soil to those field lines. I see. I know one thing, too, that uh, we, talk, uh, we, we talk periodically about, too, um, as before we go into the difference between conventional and these other brands, is just that tank is a very key, uh, key ingredient of this whole process, it but it cannot be ignored. That's right. It, it, that's exactly right, and that's one of the main things that we try to educate people and talk to people about is maintenance um, mm -hmm. because it is out of sight and out of mind. It's, it's buried in the ground and, and sometimes you will have see the manhole lids um, that, that, uh, where you can access the tank. Sometimes you can't. Um, but we, we try to educate people about, you know, it's not, shouldn't be out of sight, out of mind. There is some routine maintenance that you do need to do and one of the main ones is dealing with those tanks and, and having those tanks pumped periodically. Mm -hmm. And so we, we recommend that people do it every three to five years, but it really depends on lifestyle characteristics and, and how, you, uh, how you live. Mm -hmm. um, some people, some families may have to pump their tank more often. Um, some people may have to pump it less often, but, but there is maintenance that needs to happen. And that's, that's kind of the life of a, a septic system. Um, I use the analogy a lot of times, it's like changing the oil in your car. You wouldn't have buy a car and keep it for 20 years and never change the oil. Um, then it wouldn't work the way it's supposed to. And it's the same way with a septic system. You need to, to do some routine maintenance, like pump the tank every few years. Okay. Uh, other things, too, we talk a little bit about uh, the different types of systems. There's conventional mm -hmm. system, and that's pretty well gravity-driven, is it not? That's right. There's um, and, and to back up just a little bit on the, the types of systems, um, that's one of the things that's different in our county, in Williamson County, than other places in the state. Um, there's only basically three types of systems that, that are approved in Williamson County. And there are other, other types of systems that may be used other places in the state, but we're very kind of um, uh, restrictive on the types of systems because we've had really good success with the types of systems that, that we put in. And conventional systems is the one that most people think about. Um, and it's, it's a gravity-driven system most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the way it generally works is you have that tank that we talked about, and that effluent just gravity flows out of that, that tank through a pipe, and it goes into the field lines. And in those field lines, it's, it's just uh, a trench that's dug into the ground. It's got gravel, and it's got pipe, and that effluent just migrates through the, the pipe in the, that uh, trench and disperses into the gravel, which then goes into the soil. And about half of them are gravity flow, just like that. 
uh, that, that you were talking about. But because of the train, there's quite a few hilly places in the county, a lot of times we have to pump to those as well. So about half of those systems now, we have pumps associated with them. So it would be a two tank system as well. But those are the, that's the standard type of septic system that most people think about. I see. I see. What about the, you know, we talked about the fields, you know, in the trenches. How, how deep is, generally speaking, a, a, a given trench? Yeah. What is compliant, well, I guess, compliant? What yeah, and, and people don't realize that. Like on a conventional system, it's not, the whole trench itself is not but 24 inches uh, deep. So it's not but two feet deep. Um, and then there's gravel on those systems. There's gravel up within 12 inches of, of the soil surface. So it's really not as deep as people think it is. Um, but they're typically, you know, that 24 inches, they're three foot wide, and they could be anywhere from 40 feet long to 100 feet long um, before it goes over to another trench. So that's okay. kind of a general um, layout of one. I see. I see. Um, anything else we want to add to, on conventional systems that I might have uh, overlooked or left out? No, I think that kind of covers a lot of that. But there's other types of systems out there as well that we, we deal with. Well, that's that. I wanted to save that. Uh, okay. I want to talk about we have the the low pressure pipe systems. Yep, that's right. And uh, explain to you know, think there's there's one low pressure pipe system. And there's a modified low pressure that's pipe correct. system. What is a, what is a, give it a standard layout of a low pressure yeah, pipe and, system? Yeah, and, and that's just a little bit different uh, delivery method to mm -hmm. introducing that wastewater into the soil, um, and that's the key difference. You still have the tank, you still have the septic tank, and in these you always have a pump tank because a low pressure pipe system is really exactly what it says. It's low pressure. So you pressurize, you send the effluent to the field under pressure. So you do that with a pump. Um, and so these systems are uh, what we call a dosing and resting system. Mm -hmm. So it sends the effluent out in one big dose instead of a gravity flow, which kind of trickles out. And so you'll pressurize and dose the entire field and the pump cuts off and it lets the wastewater absorb into the soil and kind of rest a little bit get some oxygen into the, the ground, um, and then it doses again. So you kind of use the whole field at one time and, and you have this dosing and resting so that you get um, a little bit better treatment of the effluent in the soil column. Mm -hmm. I see. Also, um, to the soil, there's the soil quality of the soil. You know, we, I, we didn't go into you know, 30 minute versus right. 45 or 60. Right. Does that, that influence what kind of system you ultimately it, it, it have? It very much can. And, and so, like you said, going back a little bit, um, you have to have good soil for any of these systems, whether it's a conventional system or a low-pressure system. Um, you have to have good soil. Um, and, and you don't have to have good soil, but you have to have enough good soil. So in our world, we talk about quality and quantity. Mm -hmm. The quality part, how good the soil is, is the things that you mentioned. The soil rate is what mm -hmm. we call it. And it's an absorption rate. Um, and that's, it's an indication of how much um, that soil, how much water that, that soil will absorb. Um, and you hear people, some people use the term perk rate, mm -hmm. um, which is an older term. We don't really use that term much anymore. It's more of an absorption rate. And you'll hear people talk about a 30 MPI or a 60 MPI. And the MPI is minutes per inch. So it takes X number of minutes mm -hmm. to absorb one inch of, of, of water. So, um, so in our world, like a 30 MPI is really good soil. It absorbs water really quickly, whereas a 60 or 75 MPI, it takes longer to absorb that wastewater. And so that's that quality, and it has to do with the, the soil characteristics. So the sand and the silts and the clays in the soil, and you also have to have certain depths of soil mm -hmm. because that soil has to absorb that wastewater and treat it before it gets to the groundwater. Um, and so you have certain depths of soil that you want. So um, that's the quality that we look at. Topography as well. Topography, topography makes a big difference. That's right, how steep the slope is. There's restrictions on slope. Um, you don't want to have it too steep because then the effluent doesn't absorb into the soil good. It kind of breaks out and breaks out on the surface. Um, so that's the quality. Um, but you also have, not only do you have to have good soil, but you have to have enough of it. So you have to have a good quantity of soil to absorb however much wastewater that you're trying to get rid of. And so those are the different factors we look at to, to sizing a system. I see, I see. So now we, I, I, I said low pressure pipe system, but what is a modified low pressure pipe? That's, right. that's the, the third that we typically see. Yeah, so yeah, going back to that low pressure system, it's a little bit different than a conventional, just a general low pressure where I was describing those trenches for a conventional being, you know, wider trenches, you know, three foot wide and 24 inches deep. 
A low pressure pipe system is real small, narrow trenches. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're trenched in with a trencher. They're only six inches wide. And so they use really small diameter pipe, whereas a conventional system uses bigger pipe. A low pressure system uses really small pipe and it has holes in it. Um, and so um, much smaller trenches and they're not quite as deep either. They're only 18 inches uh, deep from the ground surface. Um, and so that's how standard low pressure is. The modified low pressure is when um, we actually bring in a little bit of soil to put on top of the natural ground. So when we look at soil characteristics, you, we're looking at the soil and the natural soil that's already there. Um, but on a modified, we're able to bring in a little bit of soil on top to kind of supplement what's naturally there and we'll build it up about six inches. And that's the modified that you hear people talk about. So that's the modified low pressure. Okay. Okay. And then, of course, uh, there, there are other types. Uh, I guess uh, yeah. one that we don't see very many of, which is, uh, I guess, a Wisconsin mound. That's right. We used to do a lot of mound systems in the county years ago. Um, and it's, it's just what it says it is. It's a mound. So it's, it's kind of above ground. Um, and a lot of people think that you don't have to have good soil underneath it, but you, you still do because it's, it's got to percolate through to the natural soil. But it is a mound system, so it's built on top of the ground. Um, and you bring in a little bit of soil, um, but it's, it's really a Wisconsin sand mound. Um, Wisconsin is where it was developed, and the sand is because you bring in sand, and that's what you build it up with, and you actually build your trenches within the sand. And so the wastewater will kind of uh, percolate through the sand, and the sand helps treat that wastewater before it goes into the soil. Um, and those are on when you don't have near as good of soil that you're dealing with. So you're kind of treating it a little bit on the front end. I see. Um, but it's a pressurized system as well, kind of like the low pressure that we talked about. Um, so there'll be a pump associated with it, but it's above ground. Um, and we don't do very many of them now. Um, they're, they're a very good system, um, but for, for two reasons. One, people don't like this great big large mound of dirt in their front yard or their backyard. Um, it's not very aesthetically pleasing to, to, to have in your yard. Um, and they're very, very expensive to build. Um, the sand is really expensive. So um, we don't see many of them done anymore. I see. I know that one, I know one of the things that we try to emphasize in, in the office, whether it's me talking in general terms, and you talking much more spe specific terms, is that uh, septic systems, you know, it, almost, as a, almost as a rule, they have to be maintained. And better, moreover, because there's not much in the way of alternatives. Now, I know uh, since, what, 74, the state of That's Tennessee correct. has mandated, and we follow that as well, uh, duplicate systems, even triplicate in the case of certain uh, certain systems and certain characteristics. That's right. That's right. And so, and there's reasons behind that. And so, like you said, since, since there's no central sewer service for all of the county um, and, and very limited sewer service, um, you, you may have to rely on that septic system for... 50, 70, 80, 100 years mm -hmm. could be, or longer. You may never get sewer service there. So you build this, this your system that you're using, well, it's it's only got a finite lifetime, lifespan. At, at some point in time, it's going to have issues. And so, like you said, since the, the early 70s, the state has required that you have what's called a backup area or a secondary area. Some people term it a repair area. So you have another area on your property that's set aside to where that you can build another septic system when and if yours ever experiences problems or fails, then you've got a way to fix your system and put in a new one so that you can still occupy your house and still live there. Um, and so, um, you know, that's that's there. It's kind of, I tell people, kind of quarantine it off. Um, but at some point in time, you may have to use it. But uh, we try not to have to, to do that. We'll try to just, see. try to keep, keep the, the primary system working as long as it can. I know. Well, I know one thing, I guess everybody's worst nightmare would be a, be a failure. Yeah. Yep. And, um, you know, uh, sadly enough, the, uh, uh, usually by the time you know you have a failure, it might, it's, uh, it's, it can be. It's usually too late. <laughs> uh, it can be, it can be aromatic. It can be yep. soggy. It can be a couple of, it could be in your house. That's right. That's right. Um, and typically when we think of failures, most people think of where sewage actually surfaces on top of the ground. Mm -hmm. And you may have ponding sewage or an effluent on top of the ground. And a lot of times that's where the, the field lines have, have reached their useful life. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so a lot of times the uh, symptoms of that, like I said, will be ponding on top of the ground. Um, sometimes your plumbing may be slow to drain. 
Mm -hmm. um, so it's just slow to take that wastewater. And then sometimes it can back up into the plumbing fixtures yeah. in your house. So uh, let's say that I'm having that problem. What, what, what kind of services does your department uh, offer as far as help, helping, even, yep. helping even assess what the problem might be? That's right. So typically, you know, if you experience one of those issues, give our department a call. Okay. Um, that's what we're there for. Um, one of our staff members will come to your property. Um, we'll kind of help evaluate the situation, try to determine what's wrong with the system um, and what the remedy could be to fix it. And it could be that it's just a, a clogged pipe or a broken pipe. Um, something that's very minor, mm -hmm. um, and we can evaluate that and, and, and troubleshoot that, and then we actually issue a repair permit to you, and then you can hire someone to come and, and do the work to fix the system. Um, in the very extreme, it could be that, that there's no way to fix that existing system and you have to put in a new system. Though, you know, so it can go from one extreme to the other. Some I can see. be very minor. Um, sometimes it may just be the pumps burn up and you have to replace the pump and it goes back to working fine. I guess that's kind of, you know, I guess that's the equivalent to making sure you get your termites checked every year or something like that. Just standard maintenance procedures. Mm -hmm. So you understand that if, you know, that, you know, uh, that once, you know, the best problems, you, you know, be, uh, the best way to handle this is not let there become a problem. Yeah, a lot of times that's correct. Um, but, uh, but if you do have an issue, um, make your first phone call our office. Um, we're, that's what we're there for. Um, it is to help the citizens, you know, with those issues. Okay. Have I left out anything else in, in this discussion that you'd like to, points you'd like to make? No, no I can't think of a, a whole lot um, other than, again, use our office as a resource. Um, you know, whether it's um, building your uh, house and, and having to install a system or, or troubleshooting an existing system, that's what we're here for. I see. Well, I know, I know we're planning, planning to go into a little more depth in a future, uh, future episode of Community Development 101 because uh, this sort of, we skated over, the, skated over what septic systems are and why we do the things that we do and alike. Yeah. But in future episodes, we're gonna talk, you know, some pre, you know, maybe get into a little more detail. Yeah. What, what exactly goes into the process so at least we can, uh, you know, so folks have an expectation on what to expect because it's sure. not just, you know, it's a collaborative process. It it's, is. And it it's, not just, it's not just us and the citizens. It's, uh, yeah, there, there's professionals on, uh, right. in the soil sciences, surveyors, even in some instances, even engineers, engineers they have to get involved. And so... It can be a complicated process at times. Okay. So. Well, I look forward to ha having that discussion with you in the future. Okay, very good. But... Now, all that aside, I want to thank you for joining us on Community Development 101, and we look forward to seeing you on our next episode. Thank you.